Welcome back YouTubers, it's Thursday night here with the British Fist, me, Mr. Parkin, and this guy sitting next to me. Salute the man, that is NJ. What's up? Thank you, NJ. Now, as I say, it's Thursday night, that means it's a TNA Impact Wrestling review, so make sure you guys subscribe up above, like this video, and comment your thoughts on the show down below. You did it just before me then, NJ. I did, and make sure you contact us in the link in the description box below. Yes, well said. Um, Well, let's just get straight into this review, eh? Yeah, let's. Now, NJ, before we actually got to any matches or any promos or anything like that, the first thing I need to ask you is, is Jeff Jarrett going to Mexico? I bloody well hope so. Yeah, well, to be honest, he's been to AAA in Mexico and he's gone and won a World Heavyweight title, so I guess that means he's going to be off TV for a bit. Yay! That's all we can say about that. Fuck Jeff Jarrett. But anyway, um, that's not that's not the bit. Uh, that started off to show him in a little segment between him and Bischoff, and then Bischoff comes out to the ring. Of course, because he has to start the show, because he's the main man, of course. And uh, this should be interesting. Yeah, he pretty much calls out Sting, and Sting comes out of his new... I love Joker! I'm the Joker! <laughs> gimmick that he's got, his new little change. This is an interesting little change of gimmick in Sting, wasn't it, from the usual serious Sting we get? I'm not really sure, but at the moment I'm liking more the serious Sting, because hmm. this just got a bit weird, and he was a bit cocky and a bit... Yeah. Well, I mean, to be honest, this is all down to this whole Hogan thing, so I can kind of understand it. It's just, I guess they're trying to go into a different direction with Sting. Now he's lost his title and stuff. And basically, he says that Bishop is dragging or moving TNA down to mm. the ground. and He's a scumbag, and he's a rat, and he's an infidel. And I really thought Bishop was going to slap him. Maybe that's what Sting was trying to get out of him, but it did not happen. No. But basically, then it comes down to, says, uh, Sting meant to say, well, you need to change things and that, and mm. Bishop says, no, nothing's changing apart from you. Yeah, and he then makes the main event for the evening, which is Sting versus Abyss, tr apparently trying to get him out of shape for his uh, match with Mr. Anderson on Ju on the July the 14th episode, which they've been uh, which they've been hyping up a lot, haven't they, this July 14th episode, due out throughout the they night. Have. And the thing is, Bishop really, really wants Abyss to just destroy yeah. Sting, so he cannot And Sting attacked Bishop, didn't he? <laughs> Yeah. Didn't expect that. I was thinking to myself, where the fuck's Hogan? Yeah, that's the thing that first came to my mind. I saw, I thought, this is not right. I don't know. I like Sting attacking Eric Bischoff. It doesn't happen very often in TNA, so for someone to attack Eric Bischoff and then putting the face paint on him again, kind of like he did with Hogan last week, I kind of like that. As an opening segment, though, I thought, I thought it was okay. It set up the main event, which was good. It set up a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, tension between Sting and Eric Bischoff, which will eventually lead to Hulk Hogan. So I guess that's what that's yeah, the direction they're going to yeah. go down. So it all adds up at the end of the day. We got our main event out of it. So I guess yeah, the opening segment was pretty effective. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. So should we move on to our first match of the night, NJ? Yeah, let's. Yeah, and so next we had our first BFG series match between Scott Stein and Billy Rand. You know what the BFG series is, don't you? Big friendly giant. No, NJ, for the second week in a row, it's the Bound for Glory series. Go and get this in your head, my friend. But it's between uh, the very, the two very uh, big unfriendly giants, I guess you could say BFUs, um, whatever, I don't know, Scott Steiner versus Bully Ray. Now, is this, is it, or is this a match between two heels? I know this, is, this was hyped up quite well last week because we had some promos from the two, but when it's between two heels, it just doesn't seem to have the same effect, does it? No, and the match itself, I was and I was alright with it. Mm, same. Um, oh, the thing I liked about this was the way that Buddy Ray, when the referee was looking down at Steiner, he got this chain and clothesline Steiner down with it. Pa Future Bully Ray Mark number one coming in, Could by be. the way, guys. Um, what I liked about this match, the match itself was very slow. You can tell Scott Stein isn't the fastest in the ring, no. but it kind of plays to Bully Ray's style in a way because he's a big guy and the two big guys work in a match. They kind of worked it quite well. What I loved about this match, though, was the, the way they were using their vocals in the match, like saying, you fat bastard and you son of a bitch. I just love that. You could hear it. and I really like that. And it really added to the realism and to the rivalry that was involved in this match. So... All in all, Bully Ray uses that chain to win. And then we see Steiner searching for Bully Ray backstage. Yeah. And attacking him, well, attacking him with his fellow immortal members. When he late gets to it, yeah. yeah. And, and Bully they offer Ray, him a spot. And Bully Ray persuades him not to attack him and all yeah. that. And then they offer him a spot in Immortal. Scott Steiner in Immortal. Imagine the promos between Bully Ray and Scott Steiner together in Immortal. How fucking awesome that would be. I'll think about it. <laughs> all right, then you go ahead and think about it, NJ. Decent match. Uh, that's all we all say about that, really. So let's move on, shall we, NJ? Yeah, let's. 
Next, we had a, uh, a no holds barred match between Velvet Sky and Miss Tetchmaker, two people that are under contract with TNA, against two people that aren't under contract in TNA, which is Miss Jackie and ODB. The thing I want to say about this for no holds barred match, it did absolutely nothing for that match. It, it, there was there, there weren't enough weapon usage. There weren't enough spots we think oh that would be. I know it's a Knockout match, but still, for no by match, you should use it a bit more better. All I say about that is that on an on episode of Impact Wrestling, especially with knockouts involved, you're not going to get too much too much in terms of weapons. But we got we got a lot in terms of brawling, which I thought was quite good for a no old bar match. Um, but was it me, or did Mitch Teshmacher just look really out of place? I mean, I can see Velvet Sky getting you know down and dirty in a brawl, but not Miss Teshmacher. She just looks so out of place in this match, really, with like the no disqualification, no rules, and all that. Yeah, I was looking at her and thinking she looks a bit not right mm. this match. Yeah, but it started off pretty much outside as a brawl. Uh, I, I, they went back into the ring and made it an official, a normal tag team match. I'd have liked it if they kept it, like just a brawl without rules kind of thing. I thought that would have been a bit more interesting, but they made it an actual tag team match. And then Jackie and ODB win after I think Jackie hits uh, Velvet Sky in the crotch or something. That's supposed to hurt the women, I guess, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I don't know, but there was a lot of... Uh, yeah. I just, uh, I just, Miss Cheshmark are just really out of place in that match. But all in all, I guess the heels get the win, which is uh, kind of what's needed in this rivalry at the moment. At least, you know, at least TNA are, are giving storyline to it and caring about their knockouts division, which no, I like. And I will say, again, for another week going, a knockout match was a good match for me. Yeah, and I do feel at the moment that uh, TNA's focus on their knockouts is uh, better than the way WWE focus on their divas, which is one of the reasons I, I'm preferring TNA Impact uh, Impact Wrestling to WWE at the moment in terms of their divas, in terms of their women wrestling. That's all I'll say about that. Have any thoughts, NJ? No, that's it. Okay then. Um, what we also got, we also got a backstage segment between Terra and Madison Rain. They're apparently having the match a match on the 14th of July, uh, along with the Sting and Anderson rematch. So they're really hyping up for their 14th of July show. Yeah, that happened over the night. They just want that to be big or something. Yeah. But to be honest, is it me or do we really want to get rid of... There's so many needless backstage segments tonight, wasn't there? There was loads that, that could either have been shortened or just gotten rid of altogether because they didn't have too much significance. I think getting rid of altogether. There could have been at least two important backstage mm. segments, not all these. They, I mean, some backstage segments is fine. There is a good balance between them. When you have like seven or eight in one night, it just gets a little bit like, eh, why do we have why are we having so many? That's the one issue I have with impact this week. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, yeah. okay then. So shall we move on to our next match, which we have some tag team action in? Yeah. Let's. let's. Next we have another a Bound for Glory series match, not Big Friendly the Giant NJ. This time we had we definitely had a Big Friendly Giant in this match and Matt Morgan. It was Matt Morgan and Crimson versus Beer Money, Robert Roode and James Storm. Robert Roode coming back from this injury. If there was one thing I would have liked, it would have been for the TNA to hype up his return from injury a little bit more, just because he's a very, you know, very good competitor. He kind of deserves that build. Yeah, because all they really did was have him backstage yeah. talk about the match, saying, yeah. we'll be fine, we're going to do great. Yeah, of course. Um, but what I did like about this match is he did sell his injury, and when Beer Money are in a tag team match, whoever they're with, usually it's a good match. And you've got Crimson and Matt Morgan there, two guys who are probably going to be high up in this uh, Bound for Glory series list. This was for a tournament. Was this a tournament match? Yes, this was the Bound for Glory series match. Why are they having it as, as a tag team? Um, I, I don't know. There's a ruling there. I'm not really sure what it's about. but um, it's I, I thought the same way, but I, I guess it's just the ruling that TNA have done to get more wrestlers involved in matches and to get it done quicker or something. But as a tag team match, I thought this was very good. I quite enjoyed this match, especially... I enjoyed that. I mean, I always enjoy beer money and tag team action. Um, Matt Morgan and Crimson are two very accomplished, well, two very accomplished wrestlers now at the moment, and you know, to see them guys in tag team action was very good. Matt and, Morgan being dominant, like yeah. you see him. Yeah. Like, it's just obviously this match was another. I think it was another good match. Mm. I don't um, know you had difficulty there. choosing which team you wanted to bring. Yeah, because I'm a fan of Matt Morgan and um, I like beer money, yeah. so find which one I wanted to win. So I don't quite care who win, but the obvious, I think the obvious win as the match went on. Yeah, I mean, uh, we got Morgan winning with the carbon footprint. I'm guessing out of all four of those guys there, I think Morgan is going to be the one guy from that group that is really going to go to the main event. So I really do, or, or be involved in the final match of this series. So I do think it was right to give him the win. Robert Roode and James Dorn maybe would have to wait for their, their chance. Maybe they'll keep him as a tag team for a little bit. I can see Robert Roode being in the main event. But, but I just look forward to Matt Morgan progressing mm -hmm. more. Yeah, I think he will progress in this tournament quite far. Um, so a very good tag match. Good season tag team match in a, in a wrestling show, isn't it? So it was interesting. I really get that WWE very much. Unless, really. unless Teddy Long makes them. 
That's true. Yeah, of course. Anyway, should we move on to our next segment? Yeah, let's. Next, we have an AJ Styles segment where he's hyping up for the Destination X pay-per-view, saying that you know he was sort of like the the main guy in the X Division, that he was the first ever X Division champion, that he styled it after the X Division is represented kind of by his style of wrestling. And then we have uh, Simone Joe, mm -hmm. who says that he only got hotened up when he was around yeah. and involved. When he was in his undefeated streak back in 2005-06. Uh, and then we get some interaction between them two. There's teasing a match between them two, but then all of a sudden Christopher Daniels comes out. And he comes out and says that you know he was also responsible for this X Division. Whenever people talk about the X Division, it's Daniels and AJ Styles they talk about. And basically he offers, uh, he says to AJ Styles, Let's have a match at Destination X, which could possibly be the main event, really. And he gets you, yes. Yep. And there's Samoa Joe just saying, like... Yeah. So, will they have a one-on-one -on -one match, or will it be a three-way? I'm not really sure. I think it probably be better as a three-way, but I wouldn't mind seeing AJ Styles versus Christopher Daniels. The I've way, seen them before. The way AJ shook his hand, mm -hmm. they were just eclairing as a singles yeah. match. But I do like this. I do. I did like the segment, just because it was great hype for the Destination X pay-per-view. Uh, and AJ Styles even mentions the return of Six Side, which I think is a good thing. It's it's an emphasis which really needs to be put on this pay per view. The fact that it's an all X division pay per view as a main event, though, I think this could be very good. It's reliving TNA's old days when they were very good, and it's between two possibly of the best X division guys. So why not have a X, why not have a pay per view an X division pay per view focused with a main event on two of the possibly quite the best X division guys in TNA? That's true, and the thing I liked about this is as Smojo was getting angry, he went out back backstage and just attacked who was Kazarian, it? I believe. Kazarian, yeah. just he was talking with who was his name? Baldy. <laughs> Christopher Daniels. Christopher yes. Daniels. The Fallen Angel, Christopher Daniels. Yeah, I've got to learn his name. Yeah, you definitely do. And <laughs> yeah, so Smojo got his revenge. Well, I don't think he's going to be in the match. Yeah, all in all, a very effective segment in my opinion. That the interaction between the guys is very good, and it hyped for the pay per view. So I really got to give the big thumbs up on that one. Let's go then to the next segment. Yeah, let's. Next, we've got some X Division action. Get in, we've got some X Division action. Um, there's another one of those three-way matches for the uh, to, to progress to the match at Destination X to get a contract uh, in TNA. In this one, we had Shima Zion versus Federico Palacio versus Datoka Darso. I think that's the name. I'm just not sure if I pronounced them correctly. I've never heard it before. If I haven't pronounced them correctly, then put them in the comment section below. Um, the only one that got an extra entrance was Dakota, which is a bit weird because the winner didn't get an entrance. It doesn't make much sense, Dick. It's different no. to what WWE would do. Mm. But they did hype this a little bit uh, before the match itself. They had little interviews with, with two of the guys. Um, in terms of an X Division match, I thought this was a, a good match. It was just, it was, it's just good to see three pure X Division guys just going at it in a freeway match. Uh, and it's again building for the pay per view again. So I'm saying this is a very good segment. And good match. it finishes with a 450 splash mm -hmm. to Dar Darso oh, so by Shima Zion. Shima Zion. Yeah. So Shima Zion uh, progresses to the match at Destination X, so it would seem. Uh, what do you think of the match, Andrew? Just wanted your thoughts. Again, three wrestlers I've never, ever, ever heard But in of. terms of the action, in terms of what action, we saw. There was like good flips. Mm -hmm. There was some good moves from each one of mm -hmm. them. So I'm going to give it an okay. I'll say yep. it was an okay. For match. X Division, for X Division uh, an X Division match, this is very good in my opinion. Uh, just like last week's when Austin Aries went through, kind of the same, similar to that. Um, and then backstage, we get a little bit of interaction between Jerry Lynn and RVD. Would this be... Uh, teasing a match at Destination X between Jerry Lynn and RVD. We know that last year they were supposed to have a match between them two at Hardcore Justice, but it never happened because of an injury to Jerry Lynn. So will this will this be happening at Destination X? It would X? be interesting know. to see because I think they could put on a good match. Okay. Jerry Lynn is a, is a legend in TNA wrestling, so, so why, they can why not have him back and facing someone like RVD? Um, next, we have a, a, a street fight, NJ. Should we, should we go on to that after this? Yeah, let's. Then we have our second knockout match of the night. Wow, TNA can have two knockout matches. That's very good. Um, very good, TNA. Um, we have Mickey James versus Winter in a street fight. I'm not sure why they're making all these knockout matches in street fights and no one's bar matches, but I guess it kind of continues the continues the rivalry on between Mickey James and Angelina Love. The thing I like about this, they start backstage mm -hmm. and she says, we're going to take this all the way to the ring. They, they keep wrestling all the way up mm -hmm. to the ring and then they just go out inside the ring. Yep. They rolled down the ramp as well very, very sexually, didn't they? That was quite funny to see. Um, yeah, this this match, it went from backstage to the ring. I did like that. I do like the fact that they can... What I just love about this match is there's a storyline there involved. And, you know, it's not something you see very often in WWE, that there's a storyline between the knockouts uh, there, true, yeah. which is always good. It's good to see. And they can feature two knockout matches in one night. Which is different, which is, I think, is a good idea. Mm -hmm. that We could learn yeah. from, because the amount of demons they all have... Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Well, especially Mickey much. James. You know, you always love to see Mickey James in action. I very much do. Definitely. Yeah. Um, this match ended when Angelina Love came in while the referee was tending to Winter and attack, and then she attacks Mickey, Mickey James, so that uh, you know, Mickey James can get, so that Winter can get the win. There is one thing I want to say. Yeah. TNA. What match was it? A. I believe it was a street fight. With no disqualification. That's it. That's yeah. what I was waiting to say. So why did Angelina come in? Uh, why did Angelina come in uh, in a match with no disqualifications when the referee's back was turned? Why didn't she just come in and do the business on Mickey James with the referee there? It's That's just, what it's, I thought. It's this lack of it's this it's this stupidity and booking sometimes that really people that that makes people bash TNA and this is some of the problems at the moment. They did it against all odds, I think, in a match. Um, so it just made no sense, but. I, in my opinion, in this match, the right person won. Yeah, it did its job, and, and maybe on the next pay-per-view beyond Destination X, they'll carry on this rivalry between Mickey James and Angelina Love at some Pretty point. Much, so, yeah. Um, so yeah, now it's time to go on to our main event of the evening. Yeah, let's. Right then, NJ, so we get on to our main event. And do you know what that means? It means that Jeremy Borash gets his minute of fame as he announces the main event. Jeremy Borash, what a legend in TMA he is. Yeah, I just was a bit confused with the Twitch or Ring announcers. Yeah, cause... well, Chrissy Hem doesn't exactly do a great job, so I'm actually quite glad Jeremy Borash does the main event. So, uh, in this main event, we had The Monster. I think his name was The Monster. The Monster Abyss versus Sting, The Joker. We'll start calling him now just a Joker, Jim Carrey. Um, the thing about this match is... It was meant to set out, Abyss was meant to set out and just dominate and mm -hmm. destroy Sting, which yep. he started to as a match went on. He, he got, got his books. <laughs> and then he got his glove on with the barbed bar wire wrapped around the wrist. And then Sting, Sting takes it and starts yeah. punching Sting it. Sting hits him on the head with the knuckles when the barbed wire's on the wrist. Talking about that, the match ended in a weird position. It was like, are you really going to stop there or are you going to see a bit more? But Anderson came out, didn't he? And all of a sudden, Sting's looking at Anderson, and I, I can see the interaction there. They're going to have a rematch, but it kind of just ended at a, a really bad point, in my opinion. It was, Dude. I don't know, it just seemed to end a bit anticlimactic, especially for a main event, and especially for an ending to a show. I expected a bit more, to be honest. Same here, I was just like, when, it, when I saw it, when I watched it, I thought, it's still going to end here, surely. Then I saw the no. copyright, I thought. Again, I think they're mixing the storylines up a little bit here. You've got the whole Bischoff-Sting thing, and then you've got the Sting... Uh, the Sting Anderson rivalry there. They're mixing them up together a little bit, but I, I don't know. The ending just seemed a little anticlimactic, which downgrades the show a little bit for me because you want it to end on a high. Yeah, so but it's left it open to think mm. there's going to be Anderson and Sting yeah. again. And, yeah. Okay, then. So, should we go on to our overall thoughts then, NJ? Yeah, let's. So, NJ, what are your overall thoughts on the show and how would you grade today tonight's show? I think it was an okay event. It weren't like any wow factor, but you get to see good stuff backstage. You get to see a lot of stuff is very in good. ring stuff. Mm. The only thing I would say is start off with Bischoff, and I'm thinking that's okay, but maybe we could have had match first, yeah, maybe, because yeah. that would have been good. My grade would be, I think, towards maybe a B. Minus. <laughs> we trying to be CM Punk or something? <laughs> a little bit. But anyway, yeah. I'll give my thoughts on the show. Um, there was a lot of good stuff that happened in the show. The AJ Styles segment, they're, they're hyping up well to the Destination pay-per-view. They've got X Division action in there. The Bound for Glory series thing is very good, I believe. Um, you know, you've had two knockout matches in there. You had a good tag team match in there. There was a lot of backstage segments, which might not have been needed. But for me, this show, um, this show was round about C plus B minus territory for me. I would be really tempted to give it a B, but the match, but the event started off a bit strange for me. I didn't like this. I didn't like the fact it started with Bischoff, and I didn't like the ending either. And when you when you factor in the the sort of negativeness of the ending and the beginning together, you kind of have to downgrade it a little bit, as that's how you start and end your show, and that's what should be most important. The thing is, in between, we had like yeah. good matches. We had the Bully Ray Scott stuff weren't the yeah. best, but it set the match over. X Division stuff was good. And then we had X Division, mm -hmm. we had uh, promo, AJ Styles promo. AJ, yeah, that's yep. what I was going to bring up. We had the knockout matches which were good, yep. so everything between was pretty yep. alright. Yep. Yeah. So I'll say, uh, I'll take B- as well. Good. Uh, B minus to a B. It was a good show tonight, so I was I was uh, I was entertained by it throughout. I love the the hype they're doing for their future pay per views in this. So I think it's doing its job. It's it's a very good show, very entertaining. So it's doing loads of things at once, which I like from a TNA Impact Wrestling show. So now the thing is, what are your thoughts? Yes. What are your thoughts? If you have any thoughts, uh, 
Leave them in the uh, comment section uh, below, of course, and then uh, yes, we may respond to them later. So. And then we'll make another TNA next week. Yes, of course. Goodbye.